I now have five ETC MC nodes up and running. They're looking good. I, what I have discovered is a bunch of troubleshooting steps that are going to help you get your node up and running fairly quickly. And that's what I'm going to be talking about in this video. This graph that you see the price going up can't continue forever. So what I want to do is help you get your node up online and earning as quickly as possible. First off, let's take a look at the minimum requirements. You need four CPU cores, four threads, eight gigs of RAM, 16 is better and you need Windows 10 or 11. Now I have a bunch of Dell small and four factor PCs. I picked one up on Black Friday. I also just took my kid's computer. I'm gonna turn it into a node. Let me explain for a second. He needed that computer for remote school during the pandemic. He's not using it anymore, okay? For everything I'm doing, I'm gonna be putting timestamps in the description below. So you can go from here to here or back here, wherever you need to go to get your node up and running. So hopefully that'll help you out. Okay, so here is the computer. I have tight VNC installed. I install tight VNC on all my computers just to make it accessible. Uh, so it might be a good idea to do that. I'll link that down below. So you want to make sure that Windows is completely up to date. Uh, I just have to go over here and we'll scroll down a little bit over here to update and security and then Windows update. And we have our computer up to date. If your computer is not up to date, you want to check for updates and make sure your system is fully up to date. The next part is to disable Windows updates. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but Anytime Microsoft pushes out an update, it's going to reboot your system, which is going to take your node offline, and then you're going to lose profitability. We're only temporarily disabling. If you scroll down a little bit here, you see advanced options. Inside advanced options, we have a section for pausing updates. So this feature will allow you to pause updates for up to 35 days. So I'm going to go over here to select date and scroll all the way down to the bottom as January 8th as last day. Um, we're going to pause updates for that period of time. This is a temporary measure that we're putting in place. We will be doing updates every single time we claim. So now that we have that set, we can back out of here and close this window. So back to the desktop over here, here's the installation file. I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna run it as administrator. And we get this uh, Windows protect message. We're gonna run anyway and say, yes. We're gonna be using the default folder, click on next and the shortcut, which is great. And then install, it's gonna go ahead and install it. Okay, that's done. We'll click on finish. All right, so now that we have it installed, when you run the app, you want to make sure that you're running it as administrator. So we're going to right click on the shortcut. We're going to go to properties and under shortcut, we're going to click on advanced. And then we have the option here that says run as administrator. We're going to select that and then hit OK and then apply. We need permission. So I can click on continue and then click on OK. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is if you have firewalls on your computer, we want to make sure that this application can bypass it. So we'll go into start menu and we'll just type in firewall and we'll get firewall and network protection. Click on that, and it's gonna open up our firewall section over here. And then we have an option over here that says allow app through firewall. So we're gonna select this, and then we wanna click on change settings, and then we can allow an app down here. So I'm gonna click on this, and then what I wanna do is navigate towards it. So the path that we're gonna follow is gonna be in our C drive. We're gonna be looking for program files, x86, and then we should see etcmc somewhere in here. There we go. So we've got the node launcher, double click on that. Then we have the etcmc GUI folder. So we're gonna be selecting the etcmc GIF folder. So inside here, we have two files that we wanna allow through. So I'm gonna select the first one and then click on open. And then I'm gonna add it. And here it is. We wanna make sure that we're selecting both public and private, they're both selected. And then I'm gonna allow the other app in. So I'm gonna click on browse. I'm back in the same folder. I'm gonna be selecting the G eth.exe file, select open, and then we're gonna add it. We add over here, we're gonna select it again, and we wanna make sure that both private and public is selected. And then we can click on okay to confirm our changes. Okay, I'm just gonna close out of here. So now what we're gonna do is make sure that we have the ports forwarded on the firewall. Click on the start button, I'm gonna type in WF Windows Firewall, Dot msc open that up you might have already seen this but if you have it i'm going to quickly go through it we want to make sure that we're allowing port 3033 to go through we're going to be creating a new rule so we're going to select inbound rule we'll select the new rule option over here and then we're going to be selecting port and then click on next and we're going to first do tcp but we're also going to be doing udp so we're going to do very specific port here it's going to be 3033 click on next and we're gonna allow the connection and then we're gonna leave all these selected and we're gonna give it a name. I'm just gonna call it ETCMC port forwarding and then I'll just type in TCP and click on finish. The next thing we're gonna do is the exact same thing but for UDP. So a new rule, it's gonna be a port. Next, UDP now, specific port, same number, 3033, click on next. We're gonna allow the connection and then we're gonna leave these selected 
and then we're going to give it a name, etcmc, port forward, and then I'll just type in UDP. Okay, and then we can click on finish. Okay, so another major issue is syncing and finding peers on the network. When I first started this out, this took a hell of a long time. Uh, it took like two or three days. I thought I did something wrong because I was rebooting the PC. I tried everything. But anyways, I saw this post this morning on Discord by Masternode, and he's giving a few steps to download this JSON file uh, and copying it into your folder. What this file is going to do is it's going to allow you to connect to some static nodes already on the network. The advantage of this file is these static nodes are always going to be there, so you could quickly sync up and get started. So this is a huge benefit. Uh, all you have to do is basically download this JSON file uh, which I already have downloaded on my computer. Before the syncing even begins, it's a good idea to have your node registered. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the app. All I have to do now is double click on it, say yes to that, and it's going to open up the launcher. When you're at this window, you always first want to check for updates. So I'm going to click the update button over here, and I'm using the latest version, which is great. I'm going to be using the GIF client. I'm not registered yet, so it sees my zero balance. What we want to do now is we can go ahead and register our node. We're going to click on the register option and we're going to type in our information and click on submit. OK, so registration is successful. I can go ahead and close that and I'm just going to click on the earn ETC pal, but we're going to be closing this in just a minute. So I'm going to click on this. It's going to create some files and folders inside the directory. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because we're going to be copying over a file in just a moment. Yeah. So they've obviously done some improvements because it's synced up and it's already connecting right away. Uh, that's incredibly fast. That happened pretty much right away. But if you're having issues, let me show you how to do the static route. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on stop. We're stopping our node. And then I'm going to close the app. I'm going to close the launcher as well. And I'm back over here. I'm going to open up my Windows Explorer. And I have the file downloaded. So I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to copy it. And now I'm going to navigate to the folder where the executable file is. So I'm going to go into my C drive and go into program files, x86. And then we're going to go into the etcmc folder. We're going to go into the GUI folder here. And then we're going to go into the GIF folder. And inside here, we're looking for the data dir fast node folder, which is the first one. And now we have this GIF folder. So we're going to double click on that. And then we're going to paste it in. You need permission. So I just got to click on continue. And there we go. And we can close out of this. One more thing that we want to do is sync our clock. If you go over to the time over here in the right hand corner, right click on it and then go to adjust date and time, select that. We have set time automatically selected. And then we have this option right over here to synchronize our clock. We just want to click on sync clock and then get a check mark letting you know it's done. And then we can close out. We're going to open up our launcher right now. Say yes. And then I'm going to go into the GIF client. And then we're going to click on the earn ETC APAL button. And it's going to go ahead and connect. And you can see now over here, we have 25 that's added to the static ones. Uh, the peer count zero, but it's going to connect right away. OK, there we go. It's already synchronized that the blockchain has started. It's syncing. It's ready to go. And that's a hell of a lot faster than the first time around. It's I'm not waiting for days. This is way, way faster to get your node up and running. That just means you're going to be earning earlier. Um, Retro Mike also created a video. I'm going to make sure I link this down below on how to connect to local peers. So if you already have nodes at home that are connected to the network and they're already online, uh, he created a great video so you can point directly to these PCs by entering in their IP address and then syncing with them to get yourself up and running faster. So that's an alternative method. It's a great method. You can go check it out. I'll link it down below. One other thing I wanted to note that is if you have multiple nodes running at home, you might want to make sure that you also enable port forwarding on your router. If you found this video useful, please hit that like button. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.